Hi, today we're going to be talking about closing entries in our accounting cycle. The resource that we're using is Financial and Managerial Accounting by Kimmel Wagant and Kieso. And we are looking at chapter number four here. So if you've got any questions or comments, please comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can stay up to date with our accounting and finance content. In addition, if you need help with any other resources, please do comment below and we'll do our best to provide you those resources. So the problem that we're doing today is problem 4-2b. This is in problem set B at the end of chapter number 4. And this question states that the adjusted trial balance columns of the worksheet for Eagle Company owned by Jeff Spiegel are as follows. They've given us an adjusted trial balance complete with its debit and credit balances. In the instructions, we're told to complete the worksheet by extending the balances to the financial statement columns. Now, uh, in Excel, I've already entered the adjusted trial balance that they've given us. The subsequent columns that we're going to make are going to be the income statement columns and the balance sheet columns. So to complete part A, we're going to extend this adjusted trial balance to our financial statement columns. Now you can see over here, the income statement is supposed to include our revenue as well as our expenses. We're going to go ahead and put our revenue here and we're going to pick up our expenses and we're going to place those here. Now our total revenue because we only have one point of revenue, uh, that's the only one that we're going to add. And we're going to take the total of all of our expenses over here. And the difference between the revenue and the expenses will actually allow us to determine whether we have a profit or a loss. In this particular case, we have a net profit. So we'll have our revenue minus our expenses. We know that it's a net profit because our revenue is greater than our expenses. Therefore, the company is going to profit at the end of this particular time, time period. Now we're going to move over to the balance sheet uh, columns. Now in the balance sheet columns, of course, we need to incorporate our assets. So we're going to pick up the balances of all of our assets, including our contra asset. Then we're going to pick up our equity and our equity, sorry, our liabilities. And once we have our liabilities here, then we'll also pick up our equity. Now, the important point to keep in mind is that the retained earnings is to be updated in this particular case. Here you'll see that we've got our net income and our retained earnings is going to be updated in such a way that we have to take our opening retained earnings, we have to add into it our net income and we have to deduct from it our dividends. Now, the dividends are given to us at $5,000 and this will allow us to find out what our updated retained earnings or retained earnings at the end of this time period after adjustments is going to be. That's $8,400. Now our column columns for balance sheet are complete and of course according to our accounting equation the sum of assets and liabilities is always going to total in our worksheet the sum of debits and the sum of credits should always be the same so we're going to take the sum of all of our debits and we have 46,600 then we're going to take the sum of all of our credits and we have once again 46,600 this means that we are correct Part A is complete. Now, once Part A is complete, then we have to move forward to income statement and balance sheet. In fact, income statement, statement of retained earnings, and balance sheets. What we're going to do is going to create a format over here where we simply uh, place our revenues, our expenses uh, in line. So our revenue is in the form of service revenue, and then we have our expenses in the form of all of these expenses and we just place them together in one format that allows us to see what our revenues were and what our expenses were so we've got 59,000 as our revenue and we have all of these as our relevant expenses we'll go ahead and put them against our expenses in here now remember then we get to calculate our net income and our net income of course is all of our revenues minus all of our expenses. Now you should see this number repeat, this 9,200. If you go back to your worksheet, you'll see over here that our net profit was 9,200 and that's exactly what's reflecting in our income statement. Secondly, to make our statement of retained earnings, we'll start off with our opening retained earnings. To it, we will add our net income 
and of course we will deduct our dividends and this should give us our retained earnings for that at the end of that particular time period so remember this retained earnings it's up here first is our opening retained earnings and this is our closing retained earnings so now what we want to do is we want to plug in all of the relevant values we can see over here our retained earnings are four thousand two hundred our net income was just calculated at nine thousand two hundred our dividends are given here in our adjusted trial balance at five thousand dollars that means that our closing retained earnings is four thousand two hundred plus nine thousand two hundred minus five thousand two hundred we get eight thousand four hundred and again this number is repeating if you go back to your worksheet this was your updated retained earnings so you have a way of verifying whether or not you're doing the right thing in your financial statements then comes our balance sheet and our balance sheet consists of our assets and all of our liabilities we're going to place all of the assets together oops just one moment we're going to go ahead and copy that one more time so that we can paste it we've got all of our assets together and we're going to note down the values of all of these assets now remember that the accumulated depreciation account is a contra asset account that basically means that we want to deduct it from our equipment value so our total assets in this particular case are going to be the sum of all assets uh, listed above and deducting our or using our net equipment value so it's going to be the sum of all assets and minus our accumulated depreciation and we get 40 of oh, just one moment we have 41,000. Now on the other side, let's look at our liabilities. We have our liabilities and our equities. We list down our liabilities and our equity. And these accounts will, again, they get carried over directly from our balance sheet equation. I'm not going to copy off the retained earnings because we used a formula for that. I'm just going to go ahead and type that in there. Our updated retained earnings was $8,400. That's $8,400. And if we take our total liabilities plus equity, we have Forty-one thousand. Both sides are balancing on our balance sheets. So that means we're correct. That's part B. Now, in part C, we want to make our closing entries. Now, closing entries are fantastic because there's only four closing entries. The first closing entry will always be the closing of your revenue account to your income summary account. There is no other way to do this. The income summary account is a temporary account created specifically to close the revenue account. Your revenue is at 59,000, so we'll debit 59,000 on the service revenue and we'll credit 59,000 on the income summary. The second step will always be to close our expenses to our income summary. So income summary is to be debited and all of our expenses, the list of expenses will be credited. This allows us to close all of those accounts that normally have a, a standard balance on the credit side is on the debit side because we're going to be crediting all of this this allows us to close all of these relevant accounts and so on the income summary the total amount that is to be debited will actually be the sum of all expenses which in this case is 49,800 the third step will always be to close your profit or your loss to your retained earnings so that means in this case because we have a profit the retained earnings is to increase so our income summary is to be debited and our retained earnings is to be credited then comes the idea of how much we need to debit or credit these relevant accounts by and that will be the difference between your revenue and your expenses in this case that is nine thousand two hundred dollars and the fourth step will always be to close your dividends to your retained earnings and because dividends tend to decrease your equity therefore it will always be retained earnings to be debited and dividends to be credited 
and dividends were paid at five thousand dollars so we've got retained earnings debiting for five thousand and dividends crediting for five thousand dollars so part c is now done in part d we want to post these closing entries and to post them means to post them to the ledger what we've done is we've created a ledger account for every single relevant account and we've placed the balances from our adjusted trial balance here now what we want to do in this particular case is we want to go step by step and see according to our journal entries which accounts to close so our service revenue is to be debited by 59,000 we come here to service revenue we debit by 59,000 this means that our now balance is going to be zero our first temporary account is closed we go and of course the income summary account is to be credited by 59,000 so we go to the income summary account we credit by 59,000 our balance here becomes 59,000 remember that this account is created specifically for the purpose of this closing then we come to the second entry where income summary is to be debited by 49,800 so we debit by 49,800 and remember this account will be a net off from our credit balance so it's 59,000 minus 49,800 we're left with 9,200 and in order to do this particular entry we have to credit all of our expense accounts so we'll go into the ledger and we'll enter a credit balance for every single one of our relevant expenses and this will allow us to re to turn the balance to zero or essentially close each one of our temporary expense accounts so 5600 gives us a zero 28000 gives us a zero for net balance 600 in our credit gives us a zero for net balance and for our insurance expense as well 3200 in our credit gives us a zero for our balance so our second entry has been posted to the ledger our third entry is a closing of the income summary to retained earnings so if we see our um, income summary we've got a balance of 9200 that'll go on the credit side so in order to close that we'll debit by 9200 here and give it this will give us a net balance of zero if income summary is being debited that means retained earnings is being credited by 9200 so retained earnings is to be credited by 9200 as an equity account that means that this account is increased so we'll do 4,200 plus 9,200 gives us a net balance of 13,400. Our last journal entry to be posted is retained earnings debit by 5,000. So retained earnings is to be debited by 5,000. Remember, this essentially decreases your equity account. So that's 13,400 minus 5,000. That gives us a net balance of 8,400. And our dividends is to be credited by 5,000, which gives us a net zero balance. So your last temporary account has been closed. Your part D is complete where you've posted the closing entries. To prepare the post-closing trial balance, we're simply going to extend our worksheet a little bit further. Now, the advantage of the post-closing trial balance is that it only retains your permanent accounts and those permanent accounts come directly from your balance sheet and of course it utilizes the updated version of your retained earnings which in this case is 8400 so we'll simply copy over every single value this ensures that all of your temporary accounts of dividends revenue and expenses have been closed off and so your balance or your total for your post-closing trial balance is going to be let's calculate the sum on our debit side this is 46,600 and the sum on our credit side is going to be 46,600 once again and that is it for question number 4-2b if you have any questions please comment below and if you need any help with additional resources do let us know we'll try our best to provide them for you thank you very much